بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, cherisher and sustainer of the world, the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. All praise is due to Allah and his peace and blessing be upon his last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his pure family, his loyal companions and all those who followed them with righteousness and good deeds until the day of judgment. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi The favors and blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are countless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran that if you try to count the favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll never be able to. You'll never be able to. Verily, Allah Almighty is often forgiven, very merciful. In the other verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a similar thing. But by the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, verily, the human being is often doing injustice and denying the favors. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are favors, forgiveness, and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From a human being, usually denial and misuse of these favors. There are many favors. Today we'll speak about one of them, or how to deal with one of them. Just the concept when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the creation, the human being. The most important one, especially for gaining knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, and Allah Almighty delivered you from the wombs of your mother without knowing anything. You do not know anything. While you are knowing nothing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided you with hearing and sight so that you might be thankful. This is number one. In the other verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds, and the hearts and minds, the understanding. Three elements that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about. The first one, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, starts with hearing. And now the concept of hearing, you can never benefit from the hearing that you have unless you put it to good use. Good use regarding any favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entitles two main things. The first one, attributing it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is provided to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing, using it in a good way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now when it comes to the hearing, we have something that is very beautiful, used often in Islamic literatures, which is good listening, or listening in a good way. What does it mean to listen in a good way? Listening to the other part, the, the one who is in front of you, the one who is speaking, to any kind of speech. This is something that is vital, so much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself mentioned in the Holy Quran that when a woman came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arguing about her relationship with her husband and complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about her situation, the lady Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said, Subhanallah, whose hearing encompasses everything. I was on the other side of the room and I couldn't understand any of her speech. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened to her and revealed in the Holy Quran the verses to solve her situation. And there is one chapter in the Holy Quran about the woman who came arguing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start that chapter by saying, Verily Allah Almighty heard the woman who came complaining. <coughs> Allah Almighty heard her speech when she came. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the detail. Now, the concept is that the Messenger وسلم, also himself practiced this throughout his life with people who are close to him, with the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, with his wives and families, etc., even with the enemy. Utbah came, he was among the elite of Quraysh and the tyrant of Quraysh. He came to the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, as envoy. The Quraysh sent him to try to deter the Messenger وسلم, from his call to Islam. This was in the very beginning of Islam. So he came arguing to the Messenger وسلم, 
and speaking about his religion and the religion of his fathers and forefathers and worshiping the idols and why do you want to leave all of that and so on and so forth and the messenger وسلم, listened to him in a good way never interrupting him until he finished speaking it was a long speech then when he finished speaking the messenger وسلم, said to him are you done O Abu Walid he called him by his nickname his favorite nickname are you done have you finished your speech he said yes the messenger وسلم, said to him are you willing to listen to me he said yes so the messenger وسلم, spoke with him and those were the touching words of the messenger وسلم, afterward that he almost embraced Islam but he refused he went back to Quraysh when they saw him coming they said by Allah Almighty Abu Walid have returned to you with a different face than the one with which he went he went to the messenger وسلم, with a face and now he returned with a different one completely but our point here is how the messenger وسلم, is listening to the enemy who is trying to defend his own false idols that he is worshiping until he finished this is something that is very important as sometimes some people are missing in their life the Sahaba radiallahu an themselves they also practice this one day Umar radiallahu an he was the Khalifa the leader of the most powerful empire of that time he was walking with the elite of Quraysh among the Sahaba radiallahu anhum the elders of the Sahaba are with him they were walking and then a woman came to ask him for something and he stopped and listened to her and she spoke and spoke and spoke for a long time and he listened attentively until she finished and he solved her case and then she left so one of the men who was there he said oh Umar you have stopped the elite of Quraysh and the elders of the Sahaba because of a woman for such a long time he said oh man you do not recognize who this woman is he said no he says, this is Khawla radiallahu anha, the one to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself listened when she came arguing to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. By Allah Almighty, if she didn't stop speaking till the end of the night, I will still stand there listening to her until she finishes. And the concept of giving the opportunity to the other to speak his mind sometimes nowadays even in family relationship we have some nobody is willing to listen at all listen even if you do not agree listen until the other partner until the other party finishes and then say your mind speak your mind up. this is the guidance of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the holy quran the practice of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam the practice of the sahaba and these guidelines are required throughout life within a family relationship whether you are in a gathering whether you are listening to a speech or knowledge or in a class or whether you are arguing with somebody who is complaining like khawla radiallahu anha or something somebody who is arguing whether he is muslim or a non-muslim like Utba. all of the cases we have the listening attentively and paying attention until the other pers person finishes his speech and of course we have in the guidance of islam listening to the elders until they finish their speech as well and elders as you know usually the elders keep on repeating themselves often and often again but still you have to listen now what does it mean to listen in a good way or good listening the concept basics of good listening the first one do not inter uh, interrupt the one who is speaking do not interrupt the one who is speaking give him time to finish his speech this is number one this is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the message of size the second one is face him do not turn away from him with your body with your face and with your eyesight common mistake nowadays mashallah you are speaking with someone and he is busy with something he's turning in the mobile looking at the watch that is not a good listening from the Islamic etiquette this is again is the Islamic etiquette so this is the second thing the third one this is a common mistake do not share with him in his speech he's speaking about something you already know so yeah yeah I know that and then this is also not good listening do not share him with his speech unless he requires to or ask you 
But else, let him speak even if you know about what he is saying. We have many of such guidelines, many of such practices, by the way. Interestingly, one thing, uh, one day, one of scholar, he was speaking about the concept of listening attentively to someone who is speaking. And as he was saying, he told them, among them is, do not stop him when he is telling something that you already know. Do not share with him when he is speaking. Tell him, finish his own speech. So when he was saying this, then one of the students who was there, he says, by Allah Almighty, you are saying the truth. Yesterday I was reading about this. And then, <laughs> at the same time, and then he went on to speak. The concept is, let him speak, even if you know about it. The uh, next point that we need to speak about is what is the most important speech to listen to or pay attention to? The speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the speech of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Holy Quran, so when the Holy Quran is recited, then listen to it attentively and pay attention so that you may be given mercy, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked between getting the mercy and the blessing from the Holy Quran with listening to it attentively and paying attention. This is something that is uh, important. We also want to highlight one thing. We'll conclude with that inshallah. Something that is linked with Friday today. While you are coming to this blessed Friday inshallah. There is a great opportunity to have multiple rewards beyond imagination. Beyond imagination. But it is linked with some conditions. These conditions were mentioned by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the amount of reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is uncountable. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who causes someone to bathe and he himself bathe in the day of Friday. So the first one causes his wife or his partner to bathe and he himself bathe. Means the obligatory bath. This is number one. And then he sits early himself and his family. Those who are praying among the members of the family to the masjid, to the Friday. Second thing. The Messenger وسلم, said, and he walks and does not ride, come in walking, so that it will be a longer distance in ibadah, in worship, from the moment you set off from home until the moment that you reach. The Messenger وسلم, said, then he comes closer to the Imam. Sometimes we see some people, mashallah, entering the masjid, the masjid is half empty and they sit at the other end, near the door. So the moment you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, maybe before the second salam, they are already off. Out of the masjid. But you have lost yourself a great amount of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will cry over how many you have lost for so long when you hear what the Messenger is saying. Then come close to the Imam. It does not mean you jump over people. No, this is also wrong. It means the nearest empty space near the Imam. Sit there comes closer to the Imam, then listens attentively. This is the condition here. Listens to the khutbah. Attentively, pay attention to the khutbah. And does not divert from it by playing or using or, or getting away, his attention away from the khutbah. Listens attentively to the khutbah. Then, for each step, for each step, not every time he is doing that. For each step from his house until the last place he sat. For each step, he will have the work of one full year. Subhanallah, what is the full year? What type of work or ibadah of a full year for each step? The Messenger وسلم, said, the reward of fasting all the days and spending all the nights in prayer wow. for each step <clears throat> unbelievable how many many hours of prayer and many days of fasting for the full year for each step beyond calculation but there are there is a catch that catch is these conditions that the messenger put 
one among them is listening in a good way and attentively. So that is why the concept of listening, this is the only way to actually gain the benefit from any speech. Whatever it might be, whether it is knowledge, whether it is science, whether it is studying, whether it is enjoyment, whether it is poetry, whatever it might be, or news, unless you are paying attention, you are not getting the benefit of that listening. So the whole concept is linked with listening in a good way, as we have uh, mentioned, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who listen in a good way, and those who benefit from whatever they listen to, and those who will get the rewards, inshallah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, wa نعم <تصفيق>